Hello again, everybody. Zach Attack is here with the attack line for Thursday, February 28th, 2013. Wow, I can't believe it's almost the end of February already. It is the end of February. All right, let's kick off with the biggest celebrity news of the last 24 hours involving a baby in Perez Hilton. Yes, it was announced last night, late last night, following my attack line last night, that Perez Hilton is now a father to a baby boy. The only gay vlogger, whose real name is Mario Levendier Jr., took to his, his blog on Wednesday to post a very important message for me. To share the news directly for me, why right here, instead of like hearing it from a press release or something. Hearing it from his site. Say, I am, re I am ready to announce that earlier this month, I was blessed with the birth of my first child, a beautiful and healthy baby boy with lots of hair on his tiny head. With love and support, my February is overjoyed at this newest and most cherished possession. Of course, he must have got a surrogate or adopted. He must have adopted a baby because, like I said, he uh, is openly gay. So he probably, like I said, adopted a baby. So that's kind of cool. Congrats to uh, Perez. A lot of people for the last couple of hours. Several celebrity friends have been posting their congrats to Perez on this great achievement. Of course, he is 34 years old, so hey, even though, like I said, he can't really give birth naturally, because like I said, he's gay and all, which I support all the way, you know. Uh, nothing against that, you know. I'm, I'm open to all people. So, he is very happy and very humbled to welcome this little man to my life, he said, for the statement. Honored. And ready for the challenge for guiding him through his life. So yeah, congrats to Perez Hilton for his baby boy. So uh, I don't think anyone knows who was the birth mother or the or the time or the name of the baby or if the child came to adoption or surrogacy. But like I said, no matter how he got it, Perez got a baby. Congratulations. Now, well, Perez built Perez Hilton got a baby. Ice T, one of my favorite all time rappers, and his hot ass wife Coco is unfortunately headed towards D I B O R C E. Yes, Ice T, well, first off, divorce is probably going to happen because he filed for legal separation. According to several sources, that Coco has been cheating on Ice T with another rapper. According to several sources, Ice T is going to the uh, going to the court so we'll see what happens there with this situation that's kind of but now I mean that the rumors it, 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 they're just rumors <laughs> e.com is now saying that the rumors of their appending separation and divorce is untrue because, of course, E, trying to save their reality show. Of course, Ice-T and Coco's show is on E. Because, um, apparently, Ice-T apparently said at the courthouse he wanted all the houses back. And he also wanted her fake titties. So, despite those several sources saying that, now they're saying that the rumors aren't true. According to E, Ice and Coco's representatives officially told E that Ice and Coco are doing fine. Those papers are fake. They are, they, are, they are not addressing rumors of the photos her posing with that rapper and are moving forward happily. That that the rumors of the divorce speculated after photos of Coco with rapper, like I said, another rapper, App9, surfaced. And she immediately apologized with to her hubby. So I think despite many split rumors, it's now official Ice T and Coco are not divorcing or separating. That's kind of cool. If it, it would be sad because uh, Coco's hot. So, anyway, so they, and like I said, Ice T is one of my favorite all time rappers. So, uh, there you go. Ice T is not separating from his wife, despite rumors. Now, on with some late night news. Now, next week's going to be a huge week for late night. Now, I don't watch late night television that often. I only watch it when there's certain people on shows. Although I didn't watch The Miz on Conan, I did watch Duck Dynasty on Kimmel. Tuesday, and I'll address Duck Dynasty, my thoughts on the season premiere of Duck Dynasty and its huge ratings in just a few minutes. But first, 
Um, this next week will be huge for late night with Justin Timberlake hosting Jimmy Fallon all week. Or at least appearing on Fallon all week. Well, this upcoming Monday to kick off of that, on Letterman, he's going to have one of my favorite groups. A lot of my, I got a lot of favorite groups, but on Letterman Monday, one of my favorite all-time groups is going to be on Letterman. And I saw them in 09 in Toronto, Canada. They were awesome. Of course, I'm referring to Music for the Masses. You know where that album is from. You know you're all a big fan of the Pesh Mode as I am. Yes. The Pesh Mode, Andy, Fletcher, Martin Gore, and Dave Gahan are on the promotional blitz for the upcoming new album, Delta Machine, which will be coming out a week after JT's album, 2020 Experience, on March 26th. JT comes out March 19th. So, DM will be on David Letterman. I'm guessing they're performing the new single, Heaven, which I'm not the biggest fan of if you saw my review of the song on my attack line. I think I did a review for it. If I didn't, I, here it is now. Um, But, well, that's happening. Now we really perform on Letterman the Shell. They also take place on the Live on Letterman concert webcast series, kicking off the 2013 series of that webcast. That Live on Letterman will be on Monday at 8. Monday, March 11th at, that means a week from this Monday. Not, not March 3rd, but next, uh, not, not, not March 4th, but next month, the Monday after March 4th, March 11th. They'll be on Letterman and they'll be on the webcast on CBS.com and Vivo and also be broadcast on CBS Radio, and it will also be simulcasted on the Jumbotron of CBS Studios in New York in Times Square. That means you can watch it from Times Square. So that's kind of cool that not only they'll be on the show, but doing the live on Letterman webcast. So many people have done that. Muffin and Sons, Taylor Swift, Bon Jovi, among many others. Uh, have been on the Adele, Killer, so many people have been on the live on Letterman series. The best movie part of that and they'll probably perform the old stuff as well as some other new stuff from Delta Machine on that webcast heading towards their appearance on Letterman show at 11.35 on CBS on March 11th. So there you go. The Pesh Mode to be on G... Not Jimmy Fallon. They were on Jimmy Kimmel last time around, but now promoting their album to be on David Letterman. What makes sense on David Letterman this time because David Letterman is on CBS owned by Sony. Kind of a Sony studio, of course. Now they're on Sony Records. Columbia, be more Pacific, so they'll DM on Letterman. Cannot wait. March 11th. Now, speed of people that I may see in Canada, like the Pesh Mode, I may end up having to see Tom Petty in Canada. Uh, Tom Petty announced today, he uh, announced yesterday, however, that he was going to make a big announcement today, where he did a U.S. tour. He's already making appearances at several festivals, including Bonnaroo in Tennessee. Now he's going to do a full tour. Uh, it's mostly a small tour. It's mostly a get out of a studio tour. He's recording his next album, the follow up to 2010's Mojo, which was very critically acclaimed. Uh, he's going on his little tour, including residencies in Los Angeles and New York, doing like four or five shows at the Beacon Theater in New York. I think he's also doing a couple shows in LA as well. Um, Tom Petty did conduct an interview with Rolling Stone about the residencies along that several dates in Indianapolis. And London, Ontario, Canada, which I may end up seeing him there. But uh, he's very excited about this opportunity. And when it comes to the set list, he hasn't made any set list for any of his shows, specifically focusing on the residencies in L.A. and New York. He's saying that there's no telling what we'll do, that we're going to mix it up, do some old songs we haven't done in years. I hope he does jamming me, even though I won't be able to see that. So, um... So besides the residencies, they'll do, like I said, shows in Indianapolis, London, Ontario, which I may go, and Pittsburgh. It's a short tour. It starts on May 16th in Evansville, Indiana, and it'll end up in Minneapolis on June 29th. Going, no Detroit dates. Stupid Tom Penny, like Brad Paisley yesterday. So that's why I may have to go to London, Ontario. Tickets go on sale, I think, next Friday for the show in Ontario. So there you go. Tom Petty heading back on the road again with some residencies, festivals, and one-off, well, not one-off, but shows in other places. So there you go. Now, on some TV news, starting with my thoughts on last night's episodes of Dark Dynasty and Modern Family. First, Modern Family. I think Modern Family got the memo that A, they're on repeat next week, which sucks, and two, I think they knew that 
but that Dark Dynasty was on. Very good episode last night at Modern. Uh, I think the theme was all about knowing when to pull the plunge when it comes to love. Because Rico was hitting on his housekeeper. Luke was hitting on a go online with a little help from, from his dad. Kind of a rebel thing. Ended up with Phil doing something inappropriate to Luke's date's mom. So that's kind of a weird situation. And Cam and Mitch trying to ask his girl Sal not to marry. And I like this scene in the end, the extra scene in the end with Sal and um Louie. Louie say, I'll be at your next one, your next wedding. Because <laughs> she knows you're divorced. But kind of a funny episode of Modern Last Night. And also funny episode of Duck Dynasty. Big, big night for Duck Dynasty last night with double episodes. First episode talking about the uh, first day of duck season. Sal with his gun shooting the snake. That was funny. And him trying to get a new dog. Who would have thought that a poodle would be a good hunting dog? Only Cy can do that. Uh, Duck Dynasty Big Night. 8 million viewers watched Duck Dynasty season premiere last night. Making it the highest rated telecast in any history. It became the overall winning show on cable. But it did not beat CSI in overall ratings counting cable and network TV. So, even though it's the number one new sh number one show on reality TV, it still can't be the biggest scripted drama show, and that is the um, CSI. So, there you go. Big night for Duck. Big winnings. That's cool to hear, man. I started watching it during its second season. Like I said, they were on uh, Jimmy Kimmel on Tuesday night. And so happy for the show being as huge as it is. I don't, like I said, I'm. Yesterday's attack line, I don't care what anyone says about this show, but stereotyping, that's Honey Boo Boo. But anyway, um, but it's a fun show. Hell of a show. Glad it did well last night. There was a two good episodes. The second episode I mentioned was about really trying to lose weight for his uh, class reunion. So was, yeah, that was kind of funny. So there you go. Duck Dynasty's back. Back in a big way with big ratings night. So there you go. Now, I'm with some wrestling news. And before we talk about TNA tonight, being the second to last impact in the impact zone, thank God, before they head out on the road, starting on March 14th in Chicago. Um, I went on W.com that, um, I cannot believe this is true. If this is true, I'd be like astonished that he was able to pull an epic performance. I think I'm talking about punk every day this week on the attack lane. Yesterday I talked about the possibilities of him and Tinker still on, and yesterday about Vince possibly mad at punk about the pile driver. But I think Vince should let Punk Sly, because he probably thinks now that he found out that Punk was ill, he was like, wow, I can't believe Punk was able to do that kind of performance ill. He was, I heard, I read on several wrestling sites, specifically WrestleZone.com, that Punk was finding an illness over the weekend and heading towards Wall. They, yes, he did. Wrestle Cena with an undisclosed illness. I don't know if it was a cold or not, but whatever illness he was on, I hate to say this, keep it up, because if he's sick, he pulls out hell of a matches. Like he did with Cena on Monday. Like I said, it was already touted instant classic and a contender already for match of the year. It was awesome Monday. And I cannot believe to find out that he was sick doing that. Wow, that gives him more guts than he than ever granted. You know, I think everyone should lay out Punk now. That I think everyone that finds out Punk was ill, everyone should be like, wow, Punk does have balls. <laughs> so there you go. Punk fought off illness to wrestle Cena. On Monday, an epic matchup. Now, I'm a TNA Impact Wrestling PV for tonight out of the UK. So, let's compare tonight. You can compare the last three weeks of Impact in London. And then you see the crowd tonight in the Impact Zone. You'd be saying the same thing I'm going to say. Wow, London's crowd's way better than the Impact Zone. And I'll be thinking the same thing about the Impact finally leaving the Impact Zone in two weeks. This is the last two weeks of Impact in Florida. So, so well as these Impacts. Top five questions that must be answered tonight. Question number five. We will go down with gut check tonight. Yes, gut check is back. And I bet you they'll do like they did last night. I think I talk, gut check had two gut check contestants going head to head. And one of those two would get the contract. Or the chance to get a contract on the TNA roster. So there you go. We'll see what happens with gut check tonight. Question number four. We will go down in Velvet Sky's first out of defense against the former champ. Well, Daryl didn't exactly lose the title. She got, she was the first eliminated in the Fatal 4-Way elimination match last week for the knockout title. 
and Velvet won it and becomes a new champion. But now Taylor gets a shot against Taylor, uh, Velvet in a rematch for the title one-on-one -on -one this time. I hope Jesse doesn't get too involved, but I hope Velvet returns. But I'm fearing Taylor may win it again with a little help from Jesse. Unless he's banned again from Wingside, which is good. Because he interferes a lot. Uh, question number three. What's the storyline or real condition of Hulk Hogan? Now, we saw at the end of last week as Billy Ray and Sting were taking care of business with Ace and Eights in a two-on-three handicap situation when Hogan was not making it. It was supposed to be Billy Ray, Sting, and Hogan in a six-man tag with three members of Ace and Eights. Ended up being Doc, Devon, and Anderson. But Hogan didn't show up. Found out that Hogan was beat up in the back by Aces and Eights. He was buried up pretty bad. If Billy Ray cared more about him, Hogan, than the match, they got counted out. Making Ace and Eights the winner. Actually, Billy Ray didn't get counted out. He basically left Sting high and dry. So, uh, we'll see what Hogan's condition is tonight. Speaking of Sting, question number two. What new matches we made for lockdown tonight? And who will be on the Leap of Lockdown teams? Now, tonight... Team TNA and Team to Ace and Eights for Lead the Lockdown will be revealed tonight. I thought Bully Ray would be in the match, but now he's taking on Hardy. I'll address that in a moment. I bet it will be Sting, Angle, but now Angle's taking on Bischoff, uh, uh, Briscoe, so it'll be like Sting, Joe, I can't really think now, so we'll see who is on the teams tonight. And speaking of Lockdown, I mentioned this a little bit, but question number one, we will go down with Jeff Hardy returning tonight to Impact. He's been out for a few weeks with a storyline knee injury to hide from the fact that he couldn't get in the country. That's stupid, right? That you went to England, TNA, England tour, and your champion when your big draws can't make it. That's stupid. He shouldn't lose the title, man. I like Hardy, but his drug addiction's... I know he's getting clean and all, but his ass is catching up with him. He couldn't get in the UK for the tour. Thus, the storyline knee injury. Now he's back tonight. And Bully Ray is the number one contender. Who's going to turn heel? Is it going to be Bully Ray turning heel or Jeff Hardy turning? I think Jeff Hardy may turn heel. But, or is it going to be face against face? We'll see how that storyline goes tonight. The first confrontation between Bully Ray and Hardy heading towards their lockdown match. For the TNA World title. See what goes down from the Impact Zone. Second to last Impact from the Impact Zone tonight. And eight on Spike TV. Cause Bellator follows that. And like I mentioned, my UFC review of UFC 157. I'm not ashamed to say that last week's Bellator. Epic knockouts. Including King Mo losing. I was stunned by that. So Bellator delivers yet again tonight. And I never thought I would say that about Bellator. I used to hate Bellator, but now I'm like, wow, Bellator beat the hell out of UFC, especially after UFC's sucky showing, as I said in my review of UFC 157, with the exception of the main event. That is it for my attack line for today. See you later for my teenage review. With that in mind, you've all been attacked by the news. Thumbs up. See you all later, everybody. Thanks again. Yeah.